Thanks, everyone, and good morning and welcome to St. Matthew Virtual Worship this morning. We're so glad you're here. A uh, couple announcements for today. Uh, first off, you can enter your prayer requests now. We invite you to do that as they will be read during the prayers of intercession. And today is Communion Sunday. So we invite you to gather your elements near you if you haven't already. Uh, you can use bread, crackers, wine, or juice, or just one or the other of the elements. And lastly, you, we invite you to join us for a community conversation today after worship. The Reopening Task Force welcomes all of your questions and feedback at 10 a.m. We will stick around on this same Zoom link. So uh, join us for that, for questions and any kind of feedback that you have. And we welcome you to join us then. Bearing all that in mind, let us now prepare our hearts for worship. Do you want to put a prayer for what? Do you want to put a prayer for Anne? <clears throat> How do you want to say it? Just say. Recovering. We invite you to mute yourselves.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. On our world and on our way, for peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all, for this holy house, for all who worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. On our world and on our way. response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the pray. Everlasting God, you give strength and power to the faint. Make us agent, agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It's now time for our children's message. So there's something special going on tonight. Anybody know what that is? It's a big sporting event. Football, I think. The Super Bowl. Now, I love football personally. And one of the coolest things about football that I want to talk about today is the importance of teamwork. Football players work together. Somebody throws the ball. Somebody's got to catch the ball. Somebody's on defense trying to tackle somebody else or trying to block somebody here. So there's a lot of teamwork involved. It's not just about one player's glory, but that of the team, right? Now, as children of God, we are all on the same team, working together together for God's kingdom to bring love and healing into the world. We all have gifts to share in this effort. Just like on a football team, somebody throws, somebody catches, somebody blocks. There's all sorts of ways that we can contribute to God's team. We all have these gifts to share. Some people have intelligence and are good leaders. Some people are welcoming and kind to others. And we use these gifts to make the world a better place in whatever way we can. We use this to help God's team win. And you know, the coolest thing is that we don't have another team to defeat. We're all on God's team. People at other churches, people of other religions, people who have no religion at all. They're not on a different team. Everyone is on God's team. And when we realize that, we can all work together 
to overcome things like world hunger, poverty, racism, and war. Because the fact is we're all God's children playing on God's team. So remember that when you're watching the Super Bowl tonight and whenever you feel like someone else is on a different team. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to all work together to serve you and those in need. Teach us that we're all on the same team and that you are calling us to reveal your kingdom in our lives. Bless us this week and help us to know what we are called to do to make the world a better place for all of your children. Amen. We now continue with the reading from scripture. A reading from Isaiah. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Imagine being the person who always loves to play host. You love to have people over for dinner. You always have the best food and holiday gatherings. Everybody has a grandmother or mom or dad who's the family's hospitality queen or king. Maybe you're that person in your family. 
Maybe you're that person in this church or your neighborhood or a group of friends. One of the many reasons why the pandemic has been so hard is that it's prevented many families from getting together for the holidays. Without the ability to share hospitality with others, it might feel like a part of you is missing. In the gospel reading today, Simon's mother-in-law had a fever. From the little we know about her, it seems she was one of those people who had a calling to welcome and hospitality. This fever prevented her from using that gift. From doing what she felt called to do. By healing her, Jesus not only gives her her health back, but gives her her dignity back, her vocation and calling. It's a beautiful thing that when she's healed, she goes right back to her ministry of hospitality and welcome and began to serve them. Simon's mother-in-law is the blueprint for what all Jesus' healing should do for us. She is healed, and because of that gift, she is able to serve. The Greek word for service is diakonia. It's the word that appears here. The words deacon and deaconess have the same root. Diakonia is service with a holy spin on it. And it is clear early on in Mark's gospel that this service is the proper response to the healing and new life Jesus gives us. Simon's mother-in-law is a model for us to follow. A woman who is healed by Jesus, perhaps even from a life-threatening illness, as many fevers could be in that day, and immediately responds with a desire for service. So that begs the question, how do we respond to the healing we've experienced through Christ? Do we follow the example of Simon's mother-in-law? Do we know what it is we're called to do? Are we healed and eager to live lives of service? Or do we respond to Jesus by staying in bed with the covers over our heads? To be honest, we're all wounded and broken in some way. We're all in need of healing. Even if we've known the love of God our whole lives. The world is a hard place to live. There's tragedy and hardship for everyone. Even in affluent first world communities, there's plenty of suffering to go around. And most of us can't even fathom the incredible suffering of the destitute all over the world or the homeless in our own country. Poverty and malnutrition affect millions. Diseases like cancer can strike at the worst possible time. Car accidents end lives suddenly. Addiction and overdose take loved ones away. So many struggle with stress, depression, or anxiety. Others struggle with relationships and feel alone in the world. And that's not even mentioning the suffering of our current time with the coronavirus pandemic and everything in our, our world has gone through in the past year. Yes, we all need healing. We're all broken and life is full of suffering. And it is to this world that Jesus Christ came it is for this broken world that Jesus Christ died. And it is for this broken world that Jesus Christ rose and to which he preached the good news. The good news of God's love and forgiveness. 
The good news that suffering and sin and death do not have the last word. The good news of eternal life with God. The good news that despite the suffering of this present time, the kingdom of God is here among us. And even this world will one day be a place where God is all in all. It is upon hearing this good news that we are filled with hope, faith, and divine love. We are inspired to be a part of the change we want to see in the world. This journey from brokenness to wholeness, the spiritual journey, leads us to a life of service, of diakonia, Filled with the Spirit, we are driven out into the world to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. That's what church, at its best, is. A place where broken people come for healing. A place where people in the process of healing deepen our connection with the divine. And a place where transformed people listen for God's voice calling us to serve our neighbors in need. To serve and ease the suffering of God's children in whatever way our gifts enable us. Healing, spiritual transformation, service. Healing, spiritual transformation, service. Healing. Spiritual transformation, service. Like Simon's mother-in-law, Jesus offers us healing. It may not be sudden and miraculous like she experienced, or it might be. But whatever the case, Christ's healing is always life-changing and inspirational. We're all in need of healing of some kind. We're all called also to some type of service. Whether it's hospitality and welcome, visiting the sick and imprisoned, cooking meals for the hungry, building houses with habitat, advocating for social justice, helping with Sunday school or youth group, whatever it is, we're all called and equipped to serve the world in our own unique way. And the truth is, on this side of eternity, none of us are completely whole or healed. We're all wounded healers. We struggle through our own suffering while we help this suffering world. We're all in this together, and Jesus is with us in it too. And because of him, we are given the gift of new life, healing, and wholeness. And in response to this great gift, we go out and share his love and grace with a world in need. So I invite you this week. Think and pray about how you are called to serve the world in your own special way. How can you, like Simon's mother-in-law, respond to Jesus' healing with service? Ask God also to reveal to you your brokenness, where you need healing. We do such a great job of covering it up and ignoring our own brokenness with all kinds of defense mechanisms and distractions that we even recognizing our need for healing can sometimes be hard. Pray for insight into both. Where's your need for healing? And what's your gift you have to share with the world? And trust the Spirit to guide you in living this life of healing, 
spiritual transformation and service. Like all the followers of Jesus before us, let us follow in our Lord's path, receive what we need, help how we can, and grow in love for both God and neighbor. Thanks be to God for the gift of healing and the calling to serve. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of intercession. Each petition will end with the words, let us pray, to which the congregation may respond, have mercy, O God. Guided by the church, made known to the nation, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Loving God, we pray for your healing to come to our broken world. Heal our wounds and inspire us to lives of service for you. We pray for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim, proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Glorious creator, we pray for the world you made. We pray for insects, cattle and all animals. We praise you for the beauty of clouds and mountaintops. Provide rainwater and food for all. Give to human beings the humanity we need to take our place among all creatures of the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Wonderful Savior, we pray for the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials and CEOs, for international health organizations that in times of trial, fear or hopelessness, they find freedom and service to those who, most, who are most in need, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God of life, we pray for all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sicknesses, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you. Especially we pray for Ellen and Mike and for Bill Kretschmeyer having open heart surgery tomorrow. We pray for Christine Russo who is fighting cancer and for Maureen Zachariasen, for Ron who is in hospice care, his family and all who grieve in this time of pandemic. We pray for Carolyn and family, Ann Farragher recovering from heart surgery, and for Colleen undergoing cancer surgery tomorrow, for Lizzie, Karen, and Jim. We pray for all healthcare workers that they are strengthened and healed, and prayers for strength for Bill Wordy, who has cancer of pancreas and liver. In thanksgiving for Dorothy's recovery and prayer for healing for Emily. With prayers for all who suffer illness and solitude, may they be comforted. Prayers for Jonathan and Natalie, for Tom recovering from heart surgery, to all the essential workers still out there every day keeping things flowing. Prayers for Fred Crompagel to help ease his pain and for Teresa Roginski as she grieves the loss of her mother. We pray that we may all find our gift and share them with those in everyday life and prayers for the family of Rex who died suddenly on Wednesday morning. Here, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for this congregation, for outreach and social ministry centered here, for visitors and all who desire deeper relationships with you, for ministries of companionship and support, and for the young people in this place who open us to new understanding. 
let us pray. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labor, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of one who dwells among us, your son, Jesus Christ, our savior. Amen. At this time, we invite you to gather your communion elements as we share the sacrament today. You can gather bread or cracker, wine or grape juice. We also invite you to commune in one kind only, that is either the, the bread or the drink. And it's also okay if you have time of private prayer rather than share the sacrament. We'll invite you to consume the elements, that is to eat the bread and the wine, if you're sharing it today, following the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to and pray. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, Jesus lived among us to proclaim your glory and love, that our darkness might give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. And now receive this blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.